Hi guys, it's Lisa Murphy, the ooey gooey lady, and today I am going to uh, elaborate very briefly, but just to uh, be able to set a baseline so we can come back to this language and use it in future uh, recordings that we grab here. I want to riff a little bit today about developmentally appropriate practice, often shorthanded to simply DAP, uh, being developmentally appropriate. It's a phrase I think that those of us in early childhood education often use a lot and sometimes are guilty of not really thinking it all the way through. So today is a little bit of a crash course. Now, what I do want to let you know is that there's there are books out there about this. I am not reading you the book. I'm not going to go into too much detail really at all. I'm going to give you like a really quick kind of encapsulated, like I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about this is really all I'm going to do. Um, so NAEYC, the National Association for the Education of Young Children, has written three variations of their book called Developmentally Appropriate Practice. And uh, this really is what it whittles down to, not to minimize the work and the effort that went into producing those books, but this isn't some nice shorthand that I think is really important as we continue to make appropriate environments for the children who are growing up in them. Whether they spend like an hour with you or whether they're with you for 10 hours a day, maintaining developmentally appropriateness is crucial. So. DAP, Developmentally Appropriate Practice, means that you are paying attention to all four developmental domains, which are, bum, 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 if I had bells and whistles, you know, but you know, I don't got time for that. Cognitive development, language and literacy development, social emotional development, and physical development. So that means that if you or your program are claiming to be aligned with developmentally appropriate practice, if you're saying on a regular basis, we are developmentally appropriate, that means you're paying attention to all four domains. And the reason why this is a very valid and pertinent conversation right now is because at least here in the United States, we've been very, very guilty of only a paying attention to this side for a very, very, very long time. We've paid over attention to cognitive and language and literacy at the expense of social, emotional, and physical, which is unfortunately why we have a bunch of fat kids running around on the playground if they even get recess and they don't even know how to get their shovel back. But that's, as I say, a different workshop. So if you're claiming to be DAP, that means that you are paying attention to all of them. And not only does it mean you're paying attention to all of them, it means that you as the practitioner are able to start linking what you're seeing naturally unfold in the classroom to these four domains. What does that mean? It means that if you've got kids who are hanging out in the block center on a regular basis for a long amount of time, and you keep getting people walking in questioning this or saying like, why are they always in the block center? What are they doing in the block center? Often we're guilty of hearing you're not allowed to do blocks anymore, or I don't want you doing blocks anymore, when really that's not what the person said at all. Really all the person wanted to know is like, what's going on in the block center? So the first thing is that I want you to start pausing and making sure that you're actually responding to the question that was asked, not the one you've made up in your head. And one of the ways that that gets easy for you is well, actually, no. Making <laughs> making sure you heard the right answer, that's on you. One of the things going to assist you in answering the question will be practicing linking what you're seeing unfolding in your environment back to the domains of DAP. And blocks is a really, really, really easy one to unpack. I mean, without even really, I think, overthinking it, you could probably very successfully find a way to link block building and block pay, play to cognitive development. I mean, it's, it's gravity, it's, it's problem solving, it's, uh, you know, my, my, the base of my tower must not be stable because everything keeps falling over. Um, how high is it going to get before it falls over? You know, I want it to fall over. Where is that tipping point? That's all cognitive development. Um, the, the shapes, the patterns that might be happening, uh, language and literacy, of course, all the conversation that's going on, the negotiating, also problem solving, get me the round block, get me the tall block, get me the cylinder, I need five more blocks, all of that cognitive language and literacy. Somebody's going to want to make a sign, you know, don't touch this, or, uh, you know, this is the hospital, social, emotional just sharing the space of a block area, uh, the negotiating, the my tower fell over and kind of managing the emotion. If you're feeling frustrated with what happened, if it got knocked over, if a friend stepped on it, somebody took your block, all of that. And then of course, physical, um, very, very, very much fine motor. That's kind of a no brainer, but also large motor as well as of the structures might get taller or you provide things other than blocks that might facilitate more like big body play. 
So anyway, so that's just the quick off the top of my head. I mean, this, I didn't even write that down. I mean, if imagine how many links we would have had if I had actually like scripted that out or bulleted it out. So the point being is that first I want the practitioners in the environments to get very much used to using this language. And a, a loving, loving, loving reminder that if you're claiming to be DAP, then you need to be paying attention to all of them. So if you're ignoring one in the name of school readiness, or if you're ignoring one in the name of whatever, you aren't being developmentally appropriate any longer. And the flip is there that if like, if you're ignoring cognitive in the name of play or the importance of play, you're not being developmentally appropriate either. Because even if you're a play-based environment, like the ones I'm out there talking about, you still are developmentally appropriate, even though you're claiming allegiance with a play-based philosophy. So at the end of the day, I want you to get familiar with this language. I want you to start practicing linking what's happening in your environment to the four domains of developmentally appropriate practice. I want you to remember and have conversations about the importance of all four of them and how all four of them are equally weighted. And even as we grow and evolve and focus on creating play-based, hands-on, relationship-based environments, they still need to all come back to four domains of developmentally appropriate practice. Thank you very much. I hope you're having an awesome day. I'm Lisa Murphy, the Ooey Gooey Lady, and this has been another YouTube video for you. Thanks.